Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to be talking about Buildapi 3.0.8. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I'm going to be going over a few different things in this video. First, uh, the best place to find tech support for build a -Pie. Second, we'll go over where to report a bug should you find one. Uh, we'll go over some of the fixes and additions to build a -Pie in this particular version. And we'll go over why some of these errors occur in the first place. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. If you're having an issue with build a -Pie, the absolute best place you can go for tech support is over to the forums. You'll see that we have a lot of things already plugged in here, and somebody may have already run into the exact problem that you're having. And the reason I like to point people to the forum is maybe you're having uh, an issue getting a particular radio set up well, if you email me and asking me directly and I don't own that particular radio, I'm probably not going to be much help helping you troubleshoot something. Where if we go over to the forum, there are guys over there using a wide variety of radios that's probably going to be able to point you in the right direction. And often if you do a search through here, you'll find that somebody else has already covered your exact question. Now, if you do find something that you think is a bug, you need to head over to the GitHub website. This is the absolute best place to post bug reports, or you can do feature requests here as well. Once you get to the GitHub site, and guys, I'll leave a link to this right across the screen, and I'll leave it down in the description below. But once you get here, you want to click on the PyBuild repository, and then you want to come right over here to where it says Issues. Go ahead and click on Issues, and this will list all of the currently known issues with build a -Pie. So you're free to read through the ones that have already been reported. And if you found a new one, by all means, please click that New Issue button over on the right-hand side and go ahead and post that issue here so we can work to resolve that in the next release. The same thing for a uh, feature request. If you go ahead and click that uh, new issue button, you can put a feature request here as well. Now, I can't guarantee you that we will implement every single feature request, but I can guarantee you that we will read through each and every one of those that's posted. Now, in this version, there's three big things that uh, we have gotten resolved. The first one is Grid Tracker. Uh, where it was not installing in the previous version. The second one is FL Digi and FL Rig. There was a new dependency that was added to those two applications that Buildapi was not installing. We actually posted that over on the forums uh, maybe a month ago or so. Again, that's why you want to be following along in the forums because a lot of times you can you can uh, see things that we've already posted that's a pretty quick fix. It's actually only one line of code that you needed to run with FL Digi and FL Rig to get it installing again. And we've also resolved the issues with QSS TV, which is the slow scan TV application. Uh, there was a few other little minor things like Zygrib would not show installed even though it was. That's been resolved in this version. Um, some of you guys may have missed the build a -Pie wallpaper. Well, I had gone through and changed some directories of where that lived. And when I made some changes, or when I made those changes, I didn't get everything updated uh, correctly. So that's been resolved and you should get the familiar build a -Pie wallpaper back on your new builds going forward. Uh, we also fixed PyStats. That was one uh, that was not installing correctly, and we've got that one resolved, so it should install on all of your, um, all of your new builds as well. We also worked on uh, the garbled text that many of us were seeing with Conky, including myself. 
And I've got to give a big shout out to Terry K4HNT. Terry is the one uh, that came up with the fix to this and discovered it was just a minor timing issue that we were having when we were starting Conky. And with just one little extra addition to the code, we have cleared up that garbled text. Uh, at least it's cleared it up on all of my systems. If you do run into that garbled text, please go ahead and post that uh, either to the forums or over to GitHub so that we know uh, we may need to revisit that. But I believe we've got that issue cleared up. We've also added uh, a few new applications. The big one is Hammers. And Hammers is the logging software uh, that's been put out recently for Poda, Soda, and I believe they have fill day templates in there as well as a generic template. I'm really excited about that Hammers logging uh, software. I believe that is going to be a game changer once it matures just a little bit more. I feel there's a few key features missing, but I do believe that the team is working to bring those to us in the very near future. There's a couple of new pieces of software that I have written that's uh, been added into this, uh, GridCalc and Packet Search. GridCalc will simply help you determine the distance between two grid squares, and it will also give you the bearing between those uh, two grid squares. And Packet Search is just a quick and easy uh, tool that I wrote. It's a command line based tool that I wrote that will help you find the closest gateways, uh, Winlink gateways to you. So a lot of times when I'm in the field, I've changed locations and it, it's just a really easy tool to use to find uh, which one of those packet gateways is closest to me. And we've also added Pi QT sound modem, which is a sound modem that a lot of guys like to use with Lin BPQ. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lin BPQ, it's the software that you would want to run on your Raspberry Pi if you were going to function as a WinLink gateway. So several requests for that particular sound modem to be added, and that was added in 3.0.8. Now, upgrading to this latest version should be super simple for you. Uh, simply run the build a Pi update tool found in the main Pi menu, and that's going to ask you if you want to update to 3.0.8, and you can just click OK, and it will uh, update your system automatically for you. Then you will have to restart the build a Pi update tool. Now, let's talk about why some of these things occur. Why do some of these issues crop up? Uh, something may be working today and then you give it 30 days and it will no longer install on the Pi. Well, there's a lot of different reasons that this can happen. Now, if it's happening right out of the gate, right after I've updated, more than likely it's my fault and it's just bad code. I made a mistake and the mistake just didn't get caught during the beta testing. So that's always a possibility. If it's something really big, we try to go ahead and get that uh, patched up pretty quick. If it's a minor little annoyance, we may let that just wait until the next release of build a -Pi. So that's one reason that some of these things can happen. Another one is, uh, I mentioned earlier, FL Digi, FL Rig required a new dependency that wasn't required in the past. So that's an addition that we didn't, um, you know, we were not always made aware of before these things happen. I find it out just like you guys do. And then we have to go in and uh, update the code to reflect things like those new dependencies. Other times, links may move around. Uh, maybe somebody was hosting an application at a particular website and build a -Pi is looking at that website to download the latest uh, code. Well, if the developer happens to move that or if uh, the package gets renamed, something along those lines, uh, and they didn't stay with the naming uh, schematic that they had used in the past, that can also create issues for build a -Pi. And occasionally, uh, this was with a recent version of Direwolf, sometimes the way things get built in the background changes. So Direwolf had been doing things one way, recently they moved to doing things another way. So that can sometimes bite us as well and cause things not to work as we expected. So there's just a few of the reasons that uh, things may not always work exactly as we expect, 
by doing uh, build a pie the way we do it where you have a choice on what's installed that means we have to or the script has to go out and grab things that it needs from individual websites or repositories uh, and it has to download those and build them on the fly so sometimes when things get moved around or renamed or dependencies change that can cause a problem for build a pie but i do my best to stay on top of those when they're reported and go ahead and if not get a, a quick patch out right away, at least figure out what it is so that when the next big version comes out, we do get all of those little issues resolved. So I hope you guys will go ahead and update. Uh, the update is live and available. It has been pushed out to the stable branch. So you should be able to just run your build a pie update tool and get the latest branch. If you run into an issue, jump over to the forum or jump over to the GitHub site and we'll see if we can't get that worked out. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.